guys, Giant Nomad here from Giant Nomad Presents. And this is the second season that we're getting going here. All right. So season two is here, and this is a week in review from last week. That's right. So I'm going to be doing two episodes a week. I'm going to be a traditional podcast for someone, and then something like this with this infinite wall behind me. Right. And we're talking about last week's news. What's going on? What happened? Well. Let's begin. Guess what? Dave Chappelle came out with another episode called Sticks and Stones. I gotta say, it was out on Netflix and it was fucking hilarious. It's fucking comedy, people. Like, I, I don't get it. He really didn't say nothing that was too outlandish to me. He really didn't say anything that was over the fucking top. He was doing fucking comedy. Like, this is shit I saw 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Like, all that shit. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But the times we're in right now, there are sensitive fucking times. People are a bunch of fucking pussies. That's right. You're a bunch of punk ass motherfuckers. So because of that, we continue to have this culture of let's cancel somebody. As you can see, because he doesn't give two fucks, he's doing a real good damn job. And he needs to be. Will you be offended? Most likely you probably will. You'll probably be offended by this fucking podcast right here. Talking about that shit. But it was genius of him to just come out and be super fucking on, honest. Doing a regular comedy routine. And that's it. He wasn't trying to manipulate the conversation. He was going directly to it and hitting it. As you know, some comedians even change up their comedic style and said they're not going to do certain jokes. Fuck that, man. If you can't laugh at yourself... Then who the fuck are you laughing at then? If you can't take a good fucking joke, then what are you doing at a comedy club? If you don't like comedy, then don't fucking go to a comedy club. Plain and simple, right? Dave Chappelle did something that was normal, that was funny as hell, that was super, just had me stuck to the fucking screen. And you can get more details about that shit from somebody else or another show. I'm talking about how I felt about it and how I feel it should go forward. If you're a fucking comedian, I encourage you to do some real comedic shit. Not all comedians go after, you know, people or races. And some, some comedians are more political. That's fine. Whatever you decide to fucking go after, and do it 100%. And do not apologize for your fucking comedy. You just can't. It makes no fucking sense. Like... Why would you fucking do that? So, yeah. If you haven't seen it yet, highly suggest it. Go watch Sticks and Stones on Netflix by Dave Chappelle. It's funny as fuck. All right. Also, what happened last week was Puerto Rico dodged a huge bullet from Hurricane Dorian. It looked like it was going to hit on smack onto the island again. And it made a huge turn. It went fucking like northeast and shit. And it bypassed it. There was some, some flooding. There was some local flooding because the rain was just super heavy. But it was n nowhere near the chaos that happened a couple years ago. The president also said that probably got like almost like $92 billion or some shit. I'll probably put the correct number up here somewhere for you guys. Um, but they got nowhere close. That thing was maybe $14 billion, And they still haven't received a lot of the monies yet from anything. And of course, as you know, uh, there was a lot of food and, and, and water bottles found in, in a... In a and a piece of land out in Puerto Rico that FEMA never fucking distributed. It was so much fucking chaos and shit. And the biggest fear that they had going on was that the power situation, the power grid, wouldn't be able to hold up to another hurricane so soon, especially since the island that hasn't recovered yet from the last hurricane two years ago. I'm passionate about this subject because I'm, I'm fucking Puerto Rican. And it really hurts to see that our country, our island, our people are struggling there. We're smart people. We got the last. We got the governor out, which is great. But we, we got to get better at what we're doing here. We got to make sure more people accountable, and that's what we're doing. And I applaud you for that, because a lot of people around the world could take some notations here from Puerto Ricans about getting together, organizing, and making a change. And that's what's going on. The president also joked about selling Puerto Rico to Denmark. He's an asshole. He's just a dumb motherfucker. 
I don't understand where the fuck that came from. But he surely is. A uncircumcised dick. So, if you want to sell Puerto Rico to Denmark, go right ahead. It'll probably be for the better. And Denmark will probably actually give us that fucking independence anyway. So, that said, that's what you fucking at. So, hey Puerto Ricans, so happy you guys are good uh, out there in the islands. Keep up the great fucking work with your advocacy, with pushing politicians out that don't fucking belong there. And go ahead and can't wait you guys have a next voting session to vote the right person in for governor and for every local little city for mayor and whatever else is coming up. You guys have the power and the youth, you guys made that shit happen. Social media was fucking huge. So shouts out, Puerto Rico is safe for now. Let's see what else we can do to help them out. All right. So um, as I'm making this video um, podcast for you guys, I'm going to tell you this is a weekend review. Um, there was another mass shooting in Texas, in Odessa, Texas, um, right over the weekend. It's, um, it's disheartening. You know, there was, no, there was a shooting on power. So just a few weeks ago, and now there's another one, and you know, some guy went up stealing a mail truck, um, shooting multiple people, uh, injuring countless others. And the conversation doesn't go forward. It just dies. It just stops. When are we really going to move ahead with a true conversation? And Texas has one of the least restricted gun laws out there. And just this past weekend, they allowed even the more less restrictions that you can take guns into churches, public spaces, you name it. So what does that mean? Is it a gun issue? Is it a mental health issue? This is a debate that no one is really challenging themselves with. You know, you have people on both sides saying, hey, it's a gun issue. You have another side saying, hey, it's a mental health issue. It's a lot of shit combined. But we got to figure some shit out. We've seen the same behavior roll out over and over again. Why are these people snapping? What the fuck has happened in their lives that say, I'm going to get up today and kill someone? That's the other questions we need to be asking. You know, can they stab somebody? Yeah, to death. Would it be less people than shooting them with a gun? Probably so. Will guns ever go away in America? Probably not. Even if you wanted to, um, you know, take away the assault rifles, the thing would be about, hey, what, what's really going to happen here? What's, what's really going to progress us into an, uh, an area of, of some type of solution? I don't know what that is. I just don't. I know it's fucked up that normal people doing everyday things are getting killed. They're not coming back home. Kids aren't seeing their parents return. Parents are seeing their kids being shot. It's fucking huge. Just last week, too, my own child had a false alarm of an active shooter event happening. That's right. That was real concerning. It happened over Snapchat. She got a, a message from one of her her friends or friends of a friend, and we had to contact the school right away. Mad parents did. This is becoming a thing where now the literal kids are spreading rumors or they're hearing something or they think it may be funny. It's becoming normal, and that's even more scary. When every day I got to be concerned about, do I send my child to school? Do I send them to a place that they're supposed to go ahead and learn from? It's difficult. It's not an easy decision. Every day I worry. So does my wife. But we have to stay steadfast and not fall into the bullshit rhetoric that's out there. We have to send our kids to school. We just can't homeschool them and seclude them and things never happen and they never get a fucking sickness or whatever. And you just can't. You can't do that. You have to keep on living your fucking life. But it's hard. And I get it. It's hard to even 
contemplate, like, you know, it, would, it, would it be my kid? So, you figure out what you need to do locally. You press on the people that are in power there, the leaders, and demand something. Don't know what. Again, the conversation is, is so polarized to where they're hitting each other. Goes not the issue. Always mental health, but they're not coming to say, "Well, let's let's look at let's look, let's look back. What does these motherfuckers have in common? Not just the tool or the method they use to kill people. What's going on up there? Did they leave some notes? Did they say why? What do we know? Is is there a profile that can be developed after years of having?" These shootings. Mass shootings should not be the norm. They should not be part of our everyday lives. It's insane. It's scary. I want to give out, of course, people always say condolences and heartfelt shit. I want to see your Texas, you motherfuckers. I'm not going to do all that because I don't believe in that shit. So, Texas, you got motherfuckers are super, super strong. You're amazing fucking people. When I was out in Houston a few years ago, stood there for a few months living there, you guys are amazing. You guys would do something right for your own people in Texas, for your local community. You love guns. You're going to have to figure it out with the guns, with people being a little bit crazy. Or a lot. That's the problem. We can't rely on the politicians. We have to rely on us. So, that being said, Texas, stay strong. You have my support.